Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. So this is going to be something different. Instead of talking about music or teaching a song on guitar, I'm going to talk about books. Now, we're not talking War and Peace here. We're talking about some fan fiction novels. And as the title of this video suggests, these are the two my two favorite summer reads from this summer, summer of 2024, in case you're watching this in the future. Hello, future. Um, so this is 2024. Both books I want to recommend to you came out this summer. I read them both this summer. They're brand new. I couldn't recommend them more. They're both, in my book, they're both 10 out of 10s, two thumbs up. I'm not gonna rate them more than that. I'm just saying I really, really like these books um, and hopefully you will if you're interested. So if you're interested, let me go through the two books I wanna suggest to you and recommend to you. Uh, the first one does have a connection to my channel because it's a book about the Beatles. Um, so obviously if you watch the channel, you know my channel is, is very Beatle related. Um, so the first book is called Reunion by Gary Burr. First, let me just say Gary Burr, if you don't know, Gary Burr is a great, uh, very uh, successful Nashville songwriter. But for the channel, you might know him. He's also collaborated, written songs with Ringo Starr. I think he's written a song for Ringo's new country album that's coming out soon. So Gary Burr is an insider. I mean, he's friends with the Beatle. He plays and writes music with the Beatle. So um, somebody's going to write, and I should say, this is a fantasy book of a Beatles reunion. I probably should have started with that, right? So obviously the Beatles never got back together. This is a what if they did get back together. So it presupposes John Lennon's never murdered. And I'm not going to give any spoilers on these books. I'll just say, though, just in general, um, after the death of Linda McCartney, uh, Paul McCartney calls up John, George, and Ringo and asks them to do a concert, a reunion concert, to celebrate Linda. So that's all I'm going to really say. But just imagine, you know, what's John Lennon's reaction to this call, uh, call from Paul McCartney after all those years? Uh, what's Yoko's reaction? Are John and Yoko even together at that time? We're talking 1998 now. Um, what George and Olivia and Ringo's situation, all these variables, you know, Gary gives you a, a, a great version of that. Um, imagine if they get back together and are going to do a concert, you know, where are they going to play? What songs are they going to play? Are they going to play only Beatles songs? Are they going to play only solo songs? Are they going to write new music again or some combination? Again, you got to read this to find out. Um, you know, if they perform, where are they performing? Who are they performing performing with? Any guest musicians joining them on stage? Who's in the audience during the concert? Any celebrities, any musicians? There's so many things, and this book is just such a fun ride. Um, it's fantasy, obviously fan fantasy. Um, imaginary reunion never happened. Obviously, we all know that. But I think if you can take, if you can take the concept in, um, there's been so many of these in the past, but I think this, to me, this is the best one. I really, really like this one. And all I'm going to say, again, no spoilers, but this is, I think, the fantasy we all have as Beatles fans of what the reunion would have been like. You know, very positive, very uplifting, and very poignant. And there's just so much in this book. So I highly recommend Gary Burr's book, Reunion to You. You know, if you love the Beatles or not, but if you're a Beatles fan, this one I wouldn't miss. So that's recommendation number one. Uh, recommendation number two has nothing to do with music, nothing to do with the Beatles, just completely different. But I figure if you like music, you probably like movies too, or you just like movies. So I grew up um, in 1975. I was nine years old, going on 10. And the big blockbuster movie that summer, you probably know, was Jaws. And I was such a fan, even as a kid. I mean, I was scared silly. I lived on Long Island. I lived near the beach. I didn't go in the summer. I didn't go in the water for a couple of years. I mean, it was such an impactful movie. But what a great movie. Still stands today. What an incredible cast. Um, so I'm not recommending, although I do recommend you read Peter Benchley's Jaws book. Um, but there's a new Jaws-related book out, another fan fiction book. Let me show it to you. It's called The Book of Quint um, by Ryan Daco, I think you pronounce it, Daco or Daco. Um, I think Ryan is basically just a deep, deep, you know, fan of the movie. And you can tell his intention to detail in writing this. But what this is, is a prequel. It's a prequel to the story of what we know as Captain Quint, um, you know, who went out on the boat with, with Hooper and uh, Chief Brody. Um, you know, when we meet Quentin Jaws, you know, he's in his, I think, late 50s. He's a salty sea captain. He's telling stories. He's giving you a little flavor about his background, obviously about the Indianapolis sinking and the sharks and all that. But we don't know too much about where this guy came from. This book tells you everything about um, 
his his life after World War II, after surviving that horrific um, sinking on the Indianapolis and the sharks and all that and the rescue. So it is just an incredible backstory, prequel, whatever you want to call it. Again, imaginary fantasy. Well, Jaws is all fiction itself. So unlike the Beatles, um, this is pure, pure fiction, but it's a great fictional prequel, I think. I mean, I feel like I wish I knew all this in detail when I saw Jaws, but obviously it didn't work that way. Um, I have heard rumors that this may be made into a movie, and that would be very, very interesting. Again, I don't want to give away any spoilers. I just want to say, you know, it tells Quint's story from basically a young sailor surviving World War II to after the war all the way up to moving to Amity Island and everything that happens. And it kind of stops when Jaws starts. You know, I think that's set in 1974, I believe. Um, the other interesting thing I'll just say, again, not going to say anything about what's told in the book, but part of the book is told from Quint's standpoint, his point of view. And part of the book, if you remember the movie, in the movie Jaws, there's a character they, I don't think they ever identify. I don't believe had any lines, but it's a little man um, that's always with Quint, like a helper. You don't really know who he is. He's just kind of there on a couple of the scenes. Again, I don't, don't think he had any lines, but I believe his name is, um, what is his name? Herschel Salvatore. That's his name. How to remember it. Um, again, not a famous name, but part of this book is told from his perspective. So if you imagine, basically he's Quint's first mate and him meeting on Amity Island and, you know, helping Quint and developing their fishing practice, their sharking practice, that whole thing. So it's really interesting to hear um, Quint's story told from another point of view. And, you know, we do meet him in Jaws. So it, it all connects really well. I, I cannot recommend this book uh, more. It's again, both these books to me are 10 out of 10s. They're two thumbs up. Um, you know, I, I don't know what else I can say. I just really enjoyed them. And they're both real easy, quick, fun reads. Again, we're not talking warm piece here. Um, we're talking fan novels, but they're really, I think, substantial. I think they're, they're meaningful and I really, really enjoyed them. So folks, I just wanted to make those recommendations to you, obviously take it or leave it. Um, but if you're interested, I would pick up, let me show you both of these. We'll, we'll go out with both books, Reunion by Gary Burr and The Book of Quint by Ryan Daco. There they are. Uh, hope you check these out. If you've read them and want to leave any comments, you know, even if you didn't like them, that's okay. Just don't, don't, I don't want to hear anything mean or nasty. Um, but, uh, you know, if you have thoughts, um, you certainly could put them in there and um, anything you want to say, that's fine. As long as it's uh, clean and uh, not nasty. Um, so folks, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'll be back with another music lesson. This was just a little bonus episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Take care.